Hello everyone and welcome back to Sendix Weather Channel. So we take a look at the latest from the walls for the next couple of weeks, which will again will take us to the middle of March. I'm calling this early morning because I'm, I'm, I'm a busy guy, you know, I'm a busy guy. <laughs> so today we have a look at the strat the latest developments in the stratosphere. Um, as obviously there's still a lot of focus around the exact developments of a sudden stratospheric warming, which now the prob probability is over a hundred percent it is literally a hundred percent chance of occurring at the moment obviously i'll keep you updated we'll have a look at the latest run from the gfs midnight run and as you can see i've got the date there the 11th of march we'll look from and i'll show you exactly how it develops we'll also take a look at the main model runs for the next couple of weeks the gfs the gm and the ecmwf and of course the ensembles and um, to see what they are showing um over the next couple of weeks so if you do enjoy today's video make sure to leave a like Let's get to 100 likes, how about that? And subscribe for more, and leave your nice comments, I like reading them all, and, and responding to you. Any questions, or concerns, or anything you'd like to see on the channel, please do let me know down below. Anyway, so, need a cup of tea. Mmm. A little cup of tea, and let's get started. <laughs> so, um, we'll have a look at the latest, so this is the strat, the stratosphere, which we've been monitoring. And there's this warming gathering pace over the North Pole, and it's pushing towards the polar vortex and its roots, which is sat over Western Europe, of course, way up in the stratosphere. As you can see, this warming maintains up to the 12th of March, and it actually is so strong that it destroys the polar vortex. It splits it, so one lobe goes into Canada, one lobe goes into the Atlantic in the atmosphere, and completely destroys the polar vortex. I mean, there's nothing left. And this warming is strong and it just persists. It tries to recouple at the very end of the run, the polar vortex, um, towards Siberia um, and Iberia, and it does not really get going. That is a proper reversal, that's a proper split, and that will have um, stratospheric, well, tropospheric impacts. So what the weather we experience at the surface, it would have impacts on because that is a major and intense strat warming. It is literally splitting the vortex. Um, so you would see impacts from that. Remember the lag time again? Two weeks, about the 27th of March onwards, we could see some impacts. If you have a look at the ECMWF charts, you can see that we are predicting quite a strict, significant warming. Minus 15 to minus 20 zonal winds, so that's definitely a reversal. And I assume a lot of them are predicting a split. If we have a look at where we were a few days ago, on the 24th, barely any of the runs were going for this sort of pattern. But just how quickly it changes from then to now is pretty crazy. Um, so we're expecting it again around the 11th, 12th of March there, with the ECMWF ensembles. Again, just to emphasise, the probability of an SSW in the GEFS or the GFS ensembles is 100%, which is pretty good. And if we have a look at the runs in the ensemble, it looks really good on this website. This green lines here are all of the runs. So this zero degree line is here, which that's in the way. Um, and as you can see, all of the runs are going for a technical sudden stratospheric warming, at least. And some of them are going quite severe with the warming. So this definitely could have impacts. Again, uncertain, probably could bring cooler, wetter conditions or drier even. It could be quite anticyclonic with a high pressure sat over just to the west of the country which is the most likely pattern, but we'll have to wait and see on the exact impacts. Right, I'm going to bring you the charts now, let's go. Well, let's start where we always start with the GFS. So we've got high pressure sat to the south, low pressures towards Greenland and Iceland, and we are bringing the wind from the west. We're quite high and dry at the moment, winds in from the west and the southwest, and it's pretty dry. Um, you can see there's some quite mild air masses, and over the next couple of days, could feel quite pleasant by day. 14, 13s and 14s by the end of next, this week, so that's pretty pleasant, um, definitely. Now as we go into um, the end of this week, towards Friday and Saturday, we turn more and settle, but still very mild, so the south and southwest could see the worst of any rain. This low is sinking southwards, um, as, it, as the jet stream kind of digs southwards, this black line is the jet stream, uh, which carries the lows further southwards, um, taking all the wet weather into Spain and Portugal, and we stay... Not too bad, but quite mild as well. Winds in from the south southeast. So again, two meter temperatures. Pretty pleasant, as you can see there. 13s, 14s, maybe even isolated 15 um, for central regions. This high pressure though gathers pace in the Atlantic, moves up towards Greenland, and begins to shift this low pressure southwards, which tries to move up from the south. Um, and then we bring in a colder northeasterly wind. And as you can see, it drags in the minus five line. Got high pressure out to our west, low pressures out to our to our east, towards France, 
and uh, we bring in a cold northeasterly wind, so dragging some colder air masses for a time. Again, resurge, resurge northeastly. We've got a slight block towards Greenland and Iceland. We're, we are staggering the lows in the Atlantic, which are trying to break through. Um, up to the uh, 14th of March, they're trying to break in from off the Atlantic. There's a block to our north, trying to prevent that from happening. It's kind of a battleground scenario between milder and colder air. Colder just about winning out, but it does eventually um, get quite close. Then a block tries to reform over the top of the country, and then moves towards Greenland, and now, oh my goodness me, bitterly cold air sinks in from the north, here comes the minus 10 line, flying down at the very end of the run again, GFS doing what GFS does, brings a proper scan, proper Greenland high in the Atlantic, that's a proper block, that's what you want to see in the winter, that's a classic northerly shot, but again, end of the run, don't take it too seriously, it's the GFS, 19th of March, way out of the um, reliable time frame. But you never know, you could see it happen, I guess, couldn't you? Um, but probably not, less than 1% chance of verifying. But again, looks pretty unsettled, looks quite cold at times. Again, remember the time of year, it's it's um, it's it's hard to identify what the upper air temperatures and the, and the uh, temperatures at the surface would be. But of course, we'll work that out in due course, we're just looking for the patterns at the moment. So GM is very similar, with that low pressure diving southwards um, into next week. Looks pretty mild though. Uh, at least up to Sunday. So next, this week looks pretty nice, pretty mild. And then eventually high pressure migrates to our north and west. We begin to drag in the wind from the northeast. So a sudden switch to colder air masses. Um, look, look, so we've gone from a plus 5 isotherm to a minus 5 isotherm right in a matter of days. As you can see, there's a block out just to our west. Uh, it doesn't last too long, although it does look like it's about to reform and resurge towards Greenland at the very end. Um, with winds in from the northeast, continuing. There's quite a cold pool of air towards Scandinavia, and uh, we're bringing the minus five lines. So pretty chilly, I must add. Um, if this was sustained, the te temperatures at, uh, um, uh, you know, the night time hours, the overnight hours, would drop towards freezing. But during the day, would feel quite pleasant. Five, six, and seven degrees um, scattered around. So not too bad, all in all. Um, again, it will feel quite chilly in, in the day, but again, the temperatures will not be too bad. Um, might be a lot of frost and fog around um, in the mornings, but might clear away with the wind, with the sun, with the spring sunshine, I should say. Now, with the ECM finally again unsettled for the south, possibly um, on sort of the end of this week, looking quite mild though. Before high pressure migrates to between Greenland and Iceland again, winds in from a proper northeasterly. Uh, we're we're properly in the uh, minus five ice firm. Now that it co continues the northeasterly and keeps us in a cold pattern with the ECM. Look at the temperatures down in the south overnight. We've got the block to our north, which is bringing the warm, milder temperatures to the north. But look at the south at midnight on um, Monday. The um, oh, that's that's today. Oh, yeah, don't have the latest ones. I was going to say, but that's today anyway. Look at the contrast between the south and the north with that high pressure where it's positioned, um, because they're bringing in the westerly winds in the um, north, but in the south there's there's a um, lack of wind. <laughs> clear spells, clear spells. Um, Probably quite where you get clear skies and um, low winds, um, you can see quite harsh frost. So they probably have had a frost in the south today. Let me know if you did in the comments. Do apologise about that. I thought looking at a new chart there. Oh, bloody hell! Yes. Um, right, I'll show you the ECM um, ensemble, um, what they're showing, and then we'll um, wrap things up. So these are the options on the table from the ECM ensemble. Oh, I almost forgot to show you the GFS as well. I'll show you that as well. So at the moment, um, 27 of these runs to the 13th of March are showing high pressure between Greenland and Iceland. Winds in from a chilly northeast direction. 24 have high pressure properly towards Greenland. Um, low pressure to the south going into France and in the Atlantic. Winds for the north could be in from the um, east or northeast, but for the south might be a little bit more unsettled with winds possibly from the south, so a bit of a battleground scenario going on there. In two weeks' time, to the 18th of March, we have 26 runs with low pressure right at the top of the country, combined with a, a block in the Atlantic going up towards Greenland, so a bit unsettled and mixed that with um, unsettled condition, but it could be quite cool. And then 25 with high pressure, Proper blocking to our north, but with that, winds could be in from the east or the southeast because we've got low pressure out in the Atlantic. Pretty, pretty, pretty bit of a background going on there, but that could be mixed and changeable. So yeah, at, the, at that time frame, it's a bit mixed, I'd say. And then if we have a look at the um, the GFS ensembles for the next couple of weeks, say we're starting out above average, 
dropping um, to around or slightly below. There's a few colder runs mixed in, uh, but they are they have grown in the amount there is. Uh, you can see the GFS operational runs kind of on its own, but you never know. There might be more support for it eventually. <laughs> um, but there's a big mix of milder runs and colder runs as well. So all this to be decided, but they could see a colder spell um, into the start, well, into the second week of March. Exact um, coldness is uncertain. If we have a look at the two meter temperatures, they are dropping, but to around five, six, seven degrees, which isn't anything extraordinary for the time of year. If we have a look at the snow row, yeah, there's not much going on there, is there? <laughs> so, um, all to play for. Thank you all very much for tuning in to today's video, and I'll see you all in the next one. Bye bye.